So for the next 20 minutes, you're going to be hearing from Richard Davila, who's head of marketing at Malaysia Airlines, Sarah Ali, who's the global head of brand management at TUI, and Ant Stone, director of marketing at G Adventures. Guys, it's over to you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, shall we start? Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, just quick intros. Uh, Sarah, would like to introduce yourself? Thanks. Um, I mean, you heard my title, so yeah, uh, look after brand management at TUI uh, across the globe. So making sure we manage our master brand and all of the sub-brands and labels under our umbrella, uh, looking after their strategies and making sure we can do the right thing that we all align um, and make sure we keep maintaining our leadership position. And? Thanks. I'm Ant Stone, Director of Marketing at Geo Ventures. We're a small group adventure tour company founded 30 years ago. Our mission is to enable travel to become the greatest form of wealth re redistribution the world's ever seen. And we do that by selling fantastic tours um, on every continent around the world. So excited to be here and thanks for coming to the session. Thank you. And Richard, uh, Malaysia Airlines, everybody knows the airline. Uh, I look after all the marketing under the umbrella for UK and Europe. So let's get right into it. Uh, Sarah, uh, state of the industry over the past 18 months and specific to your area of travel. And Tui is quite a big brand, so quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's been quite a roller coaster. I mean, I think it's fair to say that in the travel industry, we're quite used to crisis. Um, you know, we've seen acts of terrorism, we've had tsunamis, we've had ash clouds. So we're quite used to reacting. And when we're under pressure and we're really focused, I think we, we perform really well. However, I think it's also fair to say that this was the biggest crisis we've ever seen, uh, something fairly new, and that affected all parts of the business. So every market, every function, whether that be our hotels business, our experiences business, or of course the tour operating business. So uh, it was quite a, a ride to, to have to hibernate the business essentially for a bit. I mean, we had, you know, from operations, repatriation, and bringing everyone back and downing tours. Um, but more than that, you know, pivoting from what used to be a, an engaging uh, marketing brand uh, campaign, we had to pull all of that media. It's not appropriate to, to be sending out those sorts of messages and just go purely to customer service. And how do you man those teams that are delivering that customer service? Uh, we had to pull people from our, our web teams to become advisors on social media. Um, and we had to, to make sure that we're providing our customers as much information in a timely manner and it, it wasn't easy you know it took us a little while to sort of catch up with ourselves but i think um, we then got the right tools in place the right people in place to be able to deliver going from one million uh you know um uh customer service calls a day from five million a year so it was quite an extreme uh situation for us to be in but uh you know we've come through that and at the right point we were able to sort of get restarting and get people excited um, but I mean, Ant, what, what about you? You come from the experience side. Yeah, it's uh, I'm certainly, I think it's ironic being in Brick Lane, famous for bagels, because I remember last summer talking to our local bagel shop near the office just about actually, he was like, how is it in the travel industry? Um, must be absolutely, you know, annihilated. And I said to him, I was like, Nick, the thing is, it's like every bagel you've ever sold over the last 18 months, imagine then having to refund all of those bagels en masse with such a smaller team. And that's just the size and scale of what's happened in the travel industry has been an ordinate, huge, um, huge impact from that point of view. And obviously on smaller teams, you know, we weren't bringing in that new sales revenue, but we were having to serve those customers as Sarah's just said. Um, but, and also as marketers, I think that was a really interesting time because on Friday we were doing inspirational content about destinations and tours and communities that we serve. Um, and come the Monday in mid-March, we were suddenly putting out content, copy, video, imagery, emails um, that had to be exact to the point, no margin for error, very succinct, very sharp and very clear because the consumer's uh, needs had changed in a, on a sixpence and it was a very, very tough time. Um, from a marketing perspective, but also um, one that was a huge learning curve, I think, across the sector, talking to marketers, you know, we talk to each other on a regular basis and across the industry. That's been a really fantastic experience for us. So there's definitely been a silver lining. Um, it's kind of taken that top layer off in terms of that inspiration that we're all famous for in travel. And we've had to really get into the detail and that's been really important. And I'm sure in the airline sector, Richard, that must have been very similar. For sure, like for us as well, it's um, when, they, when people ask, how's it been for the past 18, 19 months? You can just like quantify the whole thing into just one period. There was like early in the summer last year, 
when all as exactly what you were saying is that all that we were trying to do is refunds and getting the information right to the people who needed it and also our capacity as an airline that flies all around the world we've had to cut down dramatically but there are still people who needed to travel up until this point most of our destinations southeast asia australia new zealand they, they're still closed but people still need to go uh, on essential travel whether it be for healthcare uh, going home, bereavement, uh, marine travel, all of those are still going on. So we're still flying to those destinations, even though it's not for leisure travel. So even if they're not going to a beach destination, people are still going and needing to fly and use those uh, planes. But also it's keeping them informed uh, what they need to know about on safety on board, what they need to know about how safe it actually is to fly, um, what flexibility policies, um, are actually available to them if their plans change or the plans change for them. Um, as what earlier was mentioned is that we're still unclear with the government what's green, what's amber, and what's red. What people sometimes don't realize is that what about the destinations in the other side of the world that you're going to? Those are still close to foreign visitors uh, for leisure travel bar none, so you can't even enter the country. So what do you do when all of your destinations that you want to fly to are still closed? So you still have to service the people who still need to fly to there on essential travel. Um, and back to your point, like I guess, how has customer change uh, behavior? And also, that's a lot of segments. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess for us, we saw it's an opportunity. So you know, we're always just changing and evolving as a business. And this was an opportunity to accelerate that change. Many of the things that we've been wanting to do, but maybe sit on a backlog or maybe go a bit slower than you anticipate them to. And this was a, a period of just pure focus. We had to enable self-service for our customers so that they could get what they wanted when they needed. We had to um, make sure that that information, as you said, was in the right place at the right time. But I think in terms of customer attitudes, they haven't changed overall. People still really want to travel. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, for us as an industry, we saw even more so the pent-up demand, the excitement any time a, a, a destination did open up. That is still there, and those attitudes overall haven't changed. What has changed is the needs that they have, the practicality that they have. So package travel has never been better. Um, you know, it's opened up to a whole new audience for us who maybe didn't consider it before. They need more flexibility now. They expect some of those safety measures, you know, of course, that, that weren't there before. So definitely some of those practicalities have changed, and that's what we had to react to. We had to launch COVID cover to give flexibility. We had to make sure we had 10-point safety plans we had to subsidize PCR tests so people can go and have that confidence and feel good about it. But to your point, there's so many different segments and you can't treat them all the same. And I think that's what we were really sensitive of is there some people who are so excited to travel, couldn't wait till something turns green. And then there's other people who are feeling a bit more cautious and you have to be sensitive to that, not push anyone, but allow people to get excited when they wanted to. So it was a real fine balance for us. And as we sort of started with our hibernation and, and dream of travel, we then were able to start coming back out and saying, look, go explore the world. Um, we're back because nothing compares to those holidays abroad. Mm. So that's what, what we found that, you know, it's quite difficult to treat them differently. Yeah. You found the same. Yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, pre-pandemic, we've got to understand actually that the consumers that were coming into travel agency or into our brands directly were already starting to shift. We'd seen some huge losses on the high street, Thomas Cook, Monarch during the pandemic, we obviously lost STA Travel amongst other travel brands. So that was unfortunate, but the good thing is that our consumers, the ones that are coming in, know their rights. They know exactly those marks of uh, standard to look for, um, and they know the questions to ask when they're talking to those frontline travel sellers. So I think that's been a really good change in the consumers that we've seen coming through. Um, and it's held our travel industry, the world's leading travel industry, to account from that perspective. I think the other thing, um, to your point, people will travel, Sarah, and I think um, after car and mortgage or rent, um, travel is a fundamental part of the British culture. We will take that holiday every year, um, whether, you know, whatever it takes, we'll take that holiday. But I think, obviously, we were grounded for the last 18 months, bar a few travel windows and travel corridors. And I think during that moment, that was our opportunity to really educate that consumer about the impact of not traveling, what that's having on the communities that travel serves. And that's something that's really close to the hearts of, of us and our companies and, and across the sector, across the industry, sorry, and our sectors. 
the impact of not having us as travelers and tourism tourists in those communities has been devastating. And I think we've been using this period of time at GeoVentures to really educate that consumer about the power of that tourist dollar. And actually, that is a fantastic opportunity when that consumer gets back out onto the airplanes, into the resorts, into, onto our tours. That awareness is going to make the planet much, much better place. And I'm really excited for that new consumer to get out so there. Touching on that, you touched about purpose. So what, has there been a shift in the purpose of G-Adventures, as you mentioned, yeah. uh, long term in terms of what you're looking to The purpose will never change. Yes. Like a couple of sessions ago, for those that were here, I think there's a really good point about your purpose is your purpose and there's missions on the way. Um, and I think that's, you know, if your purpose has shifted during COVID, then perhaps it wasn't the purpose you should have had in place from either inception or the start of the strategy or a startup. The purpose is a purpose. I've, I mentioned our purpose at the start is to enable travel to become the greatest form of wealth redistribution the world has ever seen. It come, rolls off my tongue, something I'm very au okay fait with. I would say to your question there, Richard, is I think the thing that's changed for us is that we realize that we need travelers back on our tours to realize our purpose. So whereas first we were very purpose-led in our marketing, right now we're shifting to a very much more product-led uh, product experience, the travel experience, the customer experience, making sure that is completely seamless. Because if that sells five times as many seats on our tours, because people just want to have a fantastic holiday, that's great, because actually that enables us to get to that purpose and those missions um, that lead up to it in a much, much quicker way. And that's, that's what's most important to the travel industry right now is, is volume, but doing it in the right way and for the right reasons. And I'm sure in the airline industry, it must be very similar. For us as well, and also there's so much eyes on airline and aviation and travel in general for sustainability. So for example, Malaysia Airlines is part of One World. Mm -hmm. We're signed up to be net zero for 2050. And also we're signed up to the UN sustainability goals in 2030 that doesn't only look at sustainability on the environment, but also sustainability. And as you said, in community as well, that all your business processes are actually geared towards helping people uh, and having that purpose in mind. Um, Sarah, to your, to your industry as well. Is it, that yeah, filters? absolutely. I mean, I think, um, I think, Ant, you're right. I think if you're not clear on your purpose and why you're not there, you possibly didn't have it in the first place. But I think for TUI, what we were guilty of is we're, we're such a big company. We've got different divisions. We've got an experience one, a hotels one. We then have our sustainability team. And we possibly had many different purposes. And although that all that is up to the, the same thing, I think what we took the time to do was sharpen that, align as a global team, make sure that everything ladders up to the same thing and we have one guiding purpose now that's really clear for everyone behind the business and what that's actually done is it, as a we've had to become a more leaner agile business so that has enabled us to do that because if we're all clear and aligned to the same purpose we can get things done quicker we can get things done faster sustainability isn't a separate topic to brand now it's part of brand cx isn't a separate topic to brand now it's all part of it and we're all going in the same direction. And I think that was a really positive thing for us throughout this is you don't often get given the time to be able to, to align and focus across a, a global team like that. So, you know, it, it's been a really good opportunity for us and we're coming out well. I mean, we don't know exactly when we're coming out, but we feel like we're coming out stronger from all of this now. And as you said, demand is there. Yeah. And you Absolutely. touched on this earlier, Sarah, in terms of there will be future crises uh, there seems to be a crisis in travel every 10 years. We know this, but pro well, not well, as big as this. Well, touch wood. So what fundamental processes have you put in place uh, for TUI, uh, or you've seen, that will future-proof the industry and the organization on your side yeah. uh, for future crises? I mean, I think, you know, we touched on it earlier that, you know, customers want to travel. So, I mean, you know, there's that saying, isn't there? Travel is the only thing you buy that makes you richer. People really want to, and that's not going away. And so for us, we've been extending our, our remit and broadening our offering. You know, we've been known for package for many years, but we actually do sell accommodation only, flight only, experiences. We're launching experiences locally, sort of in your uh, sort of hometown or your home country. And for us, that gives us that uh, flexibility and diversity to be able to say, okay, when there's a crisis in one place, let's leverage another part of our business. So I think that's something for us is it's spreading our risk and making sure that we can manage different parts of the business differently. I think the fact that we are more agile, we are leaner, allows us to be faster. And the fact that we've had to, we've always been insights led, I think, but 
we had to listen so closely to the, our customers now. We had to partner with them almost. And that is gonna, we're gonna take that with us and make sure that all of the innovations we do, all of the new concepts we bring up, that's informed by what the customer needs at that time. Um, so I think for us, you know, we're, we're excited, you know, we're thinking 2022 is going to be stronger than 2019 because everyone is just waiting to get out there. Um, we don't know exactly how we're going to get there. Uh, it, it's all still a little bit unknown, but we've got now the right tools, the right team, the right momentum to come out of that. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, I mean, there's fundamental, there's what we call table stakes, which are booking with confidence, making sure there's flexibility in those booking conditions, travel with confidence, making sure we've got the health and safety aspects covered. But I think the, the future, the, the biggest takeaway, the residual benefit from uh, internal is we've galvanized both global and regional, we've galvanized product and marketing and sales and operation, and I think we're closer than ever as a tight knit. We're, we're not no longer to have those tribal departments, those silos happening in London, Toronto for us, Melbourne, etc. Um, happening. We are one team and I think that will, that will see us through. Um, I think also the other opportunity for the travel industry and those that aren't in it might be interested. I think it's, we are, we, you know, we, unfortunately there are a lot of people that have left the travel industry for obvious reasons. There's no two ways about it. What that's done is left a lot of empty seats and I think now it's the time for the travel industry to reflect, say, actually, are we open now to change, getting people in from other sectors, other industries, because I think that's how we'll change. It's not about bringing back the same mindsets, the same um, attitudes, the same beliefs. Actually, it's about actually opening ourselves up and work. events like Madfest are fantastic for it. It's the reason I'm here today, actually, is to open my mind to other sectors. And I think we need to be making that two-way street, bringing people into the industry uh, to enable us to do that as well, stay at the front of where we should be. Like for us, it's, again, to Sarah's point, listening exactly to our customers and agility. So those two things. And for us as an airline, like sometimes when you're not allowed to sell the main product that you have to sell, which is an airline seat, uh, you have to diversify and listen to and bring that engagement to the customers of other products that you actually have in your portfolio and your different platforms as well. So we've been able to develop that uh, to diversify our entire product offering if you're not allowed to sell one of the products that you actually have. I think that was it for us today. Thank you very much. That's excellent, guys. That's brilliant. Round of applause, please, guys. Oh, super uh, we've got time just for one quick question, um, and this is for, I think, more for Sarah and Ant, given what you do. Does purpose really matter in travel? Your purpose is to get someone somewhere, but how, why is purpose are they really that important? I mean, for us, it's paramount. So, and when I talk about purpose, I'm not talking about what animal are we as a brand, or are we a magician or a lover? I'm not, I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about having clarity of why our team come to work, and what we expect our customers to get out of it. And it's really important because the travel industry is merging so much. Accommodation providers are becoming holiday providers, airlines are selling holidays. Um, everyone is diversifying. And you know we're also gonna start competing with the likes of Google, uh, Instagram. So it's really important because we need our customers to have an emotional reason to come to us, not just a product or a rational or practical reason to come to us. So we only have that if we're clear on why they should come to us. Guys, I think that's just about time. So once again, please show your appreciation for Sarah and, and Richard.